Hey everybody, it's Dr. Lori and I'm back with more Real Bargains. That's right, that's where people like you are finding real bargains. I show you how you find them at thrift stores, yard sales, estate sales, all over when you're shopping. So the Real Bargains, of course, they're stories from people just like you. I have permission to retell all of these stories and I'm going to talk about china and porcelain, glass, jewelry, and more for this episode of Real Bargains. Let's get started. This first Real Bargain comes from a video call and a video call where someone actually bought this online in a purchase of a lot. So a lot of jewelry uh, came together and this particular real bargain, of course, is a Chanel pin. That's right, it's a Chanel pin. Now, a lot of things about this pin, people would say, oh, it's a fake, oh, it's a fake. I teach you how to actually tell a fake. I actually uh, give you a lot of ways that you can actually tell how to tell a fake. That's on, of course, my website. You can read all different information about that. But one of the things you want to look for is the way in which these made in France Chanel pins are the real deal. One thing is that characteristic double C, of course, logo. The Chanel letters also, the capital Chanel letters, are another telltale sign that you'll see in pins like this one. So the pin's about three inches tall. Uh, the pin is in good condition. The pin has a mark on it for Chanel, and that's going to be one of the telltale signs, the logo mark for Chanel. So the video caller says to me, Dr. Lori, I wasn't sure. I'm looking at it. I, I paid $20 for the lot, and, you know, it was a lot of jewelry. I, I expected that it would be a fake, but now I'm starting to question it, and I wanted to come to you to see whether or not you can tell me um, if it's real, I tested the diamonds with the diamond tester, with your diamond tester, Dr. Lori, and it, they came out, in fact, they came out to be real diamonds. So the pearls, I'm not sure about. Well, I was sure about the pearls. The pearls also are, of course, real pearls. They're beautiful, and they're set. They're set in that same double C all the way around. The Chanel has the little tiny diamond chips in it, all those, those letters that spell out Chanel. And as I said, three inches. I want you to look for specificity. What does that mean? I want you to look for a nice, clear cut on all of these pieces for real Chanel. And I want you also to look for these uh, pieces of jewelry if you've got it. Don't, you know, don't always expect automatically that it's not the real deal. Was this the real deal? Is that what you're asking? $20 for the lot. What's the pin worth? Just this one pin? 1400 bucks for the pin. The Chanel pin was certainly a real bargain too. This next piece comes from doc the Dr. Lori class. I hold classes, if you didn't know that, where you can learn more about your art, antiques, and collectibles. I hope you'll sign up for one. Uh, so this particular piece comes from the Dr. Lori class, and the person in the class says to me, Dr. Lori, I bought this with the Goodwill Blue Box. Now, a lot of you have been saying the Goodwill Blue Boxes used to be cheaper, and used to get more, and now they're $49 at the time of this taping. They're $49.99, and that's what this person paid. Well, even for $49.99, you can find good things in these jewelry jars, Goodwill Blue Boxes, and other places where there's a lot you know, pounds of jewelry. Yes, you have to go through it. And yes, you have to know what you're looking for, right? You have to, you have to learn what you're looking for from me. Of course, I'm on my website, know the marks, understand what types of materials they are. This one was pretty easy because this is a charm bracelet. I personally love charm bracelets. I think they're beautiful. I love to hear the stories. I have one of my own that I've, that I've had for years that I've sort of added to over the years. And I really like charm bracelets. This one is marked 14 karat gold. So right out of the chute, your $49.99 investment, you shouldn't be complaining because you got 14 karat gold out of this. So it has two charms on it. One is a cross, a crucifix, and one of the charms is actually a gold cross. And one of the charms is a little figure of a boy with a little green stone in it. So that was very typical. This can help you date some of the pieces. So the little the little charm of the little boy, sort of a cutout of an image of a little child um, with this green stone in it, were very popular in the 80s and 90s, more into the 1990s, um, uh, for grandchildren, for mothers, and then the actual stone would usually be the birthstone, gemstone birthstone of that child. So the green emerald birthstone here would indicate the month of birth of that particular child. Pretty typical, pretty popular in the 1990s. Okay, so you've got that. Then it's about markings. 
18 karat gold is the marking on that little boy figural charm. And the crucifix charm was unmarked, but is gold. So even if it's only gold plated, it still is gold in color. All right. The kicker was that the actual bracelet, which is a beautiful bracelet, um, is marked 14 karat. So it's marked 14 karat. It's got a safety clasp. You can see that cl safety clasp to make sure it stays on. And there aren't too many charms on it. So, okay, you've got only two charms, but the bracelet alone has value and the individual charms, as well as the little emerald gemstone, that has value too. So she said that she opened it up and she looked at it and when she saw with the loop that it had 14 karat gold in the bracelet, she was excited. I like the repeating form of the links and you'll notice the open work and that's done with, that's oftentimes done on charm bracelets because you have to fit the charm on with of course a little jump ring. So that's pretty typical to have these open work pieces on charm bracelets. It's a nice bracelet in and of its own right, even if you took the charms off, but if you want to use it as a charm bracelet, it certainly is obviously the right style and of course the right material because you're looking for quality. You're looking for 14K, 18K. 18 karat gold charm, 14 karat gold bracelet, you know, and then you've got another charm in the, in the form of the cross. It's nice. For $49.99, it drills down to about $3 for the bracelet if you add up what everything else was worth, right? So everything else in this $49.99 Goodwill blue box, this particular bracelet, this bracelet's only costing her three bucks. What's it worth? $750 in the gold. It's a beautiful gold bracelet. Beautiful. Even the charms are nice. Even if you don't have a son or a grandson who was born with an emerald birthstone, <laughs> but a real bargain too. So for three bucks, it's worth 750. This next real bargain comes from Dr. Lori's class. That's right. My classes, which are held frequently, students come and of course they show me what they found and I do the appraisals. In addition, I tell all of them, you know, individually, uh, what to look for, what they've got, and how to spot those valuables, just like I'm doing here. So a couple of things. This was really a wonderful and surprising uh, addition to the class. On an online auction called CT Bids, my particular student bought this, and you can see it in her china closet. You can see in her china closet or china cabinet uh, this very, very large set, more than four hundred pieces of Minton Bone China dinnerware. That's right, 400 pieces is what she bought. She bought 400 pieces of Minton Bone China dinnerware in the ancestral pattern. A very popular pattern, a very well-known pattern. And what did she get? Well, she got dinner plates, she got salad plates, she got bread plates, she got under plates, she got platters, she got covered casserole dishes, she got all kinds of stuff, serving bowls and uh, lots of pieces, teapots, you name it. She got 400 pieces for this um, at this online auction. She said, I thought it was beautiful. I knew it was going to fill up my whole china cabinet, which it did and beautifully so. Um, I did remind her not to stack them too high. You don't want to stack those dishes too high. But in fact, soup bowls and all kinds of great serving plates as well. So for the 400 pieces, she paid $425, which is just about a dollar a piece. That's right. So think about that. You got a teapot for a buck. You got an underplate for a buck. You've got a covered casserole dish for a buck in one of the premier English ceramic, uh, quality English ceramic pottery pieces. I mean, just beautiful china. So she gets this piece, she says, Dr. Lori, I, I wanted to know what the collection was worth. I knew that it was a lot of pieces, but I figured, you know, for this investment, and when you drill it down to a dollar a piece, I thought I might have something special. And certainly she did. The market for China is so hot. People are collecting it. People are reselling it. People are, of course, you know, enamored with this kind of high quality pieces. Bone China is durable, lovely. People like it and people do collect it. Of course, that indicates that it has bone ash in it. How much is this worth for her $425 investment? It's a real bargain worth $3,200 for 400 pieces of Minton. That's a real bargain too. This next real bargain comes from the Dr. Lori class. That's right. So I hope you'll join one of my classes. It's a thrift store purchase from Goodwill. And here are a couple of tips that I think are kind of cool 
you know, when you hear what other treasure hunters just like you are doing when they're shopping. So this particular treasure hunter says to me during my class, hey, Dr. Lori, you know, I have a rule. I go through and I do my shopping at Goodwill or at whatever thrift store I'm at. And then afterwards, I take another pass around after I think I'm finished. So before I go up to the registers to pay for everything, I go around to see if the staff has put out anything new because I figure I'm still here. I might as well take another look. I think that's a pretty good idea, you know. Um, I always like to sort of walk around it once and kind of get the lay of the land and then go again. But so she does this at the end. When she's done, she just takes one more pass to see if they put anything new out during the time period that she was shopping. It was a good idea. So she sees this piece and it's on a lower shelf. And she says, you know, it was, it was pushed back. It was very dusty. I had to bend down and reach over for it. And, uh, but I went and I, I kind of went and got it. I, I did the work to kind of get it out of there and I dusted it off and I saw that it was signed. Well, here you go. It's signed. That should just be a big light bulb. I've taught you this a million times. If it's signed, you probably want to take a second look at it, right? So, okay. So she sees this piece and she takes it out and she sees that it's signed and it's signed Steve Zoller. Steve Zoller, a California artist, relatively well known for resin and fiber glass. And that's what this piece is. Now this piece is pretty special because it is actually an amber color. It actually has a uh, form or basically figures on it that represent the growth rings of a tree. So it's trying to simulate this connection or this juxtaposition between the natural environment and something that's fabricated. This is a, this idea of fabrication and natural forms coming together is something very typical in the latter part of the 20th century and the early 21st century in art. So particularly in these kinds of pieces, you want that idea of something that looks like nature, but it's been fabricated. So that's what we're trying to put together. That's why this piece is so interesting. The other thing about it that's great is that it is, of, it is of course, resin and fiber glass. It's a lovely piece and it's big, solid, heavy, 30 pounds is what she estimated it to weigh. So she has to get it from underneath the shelf. Now, a lot of you would give up on this. You go, okay, that's too big. I'm not dealing with that. It's all dusty. I'm not doing it. But she saw the signature and she said, I'm going to do the work to get this out of here. So she, of course, pulls it out. She moves away some of the dust, you know, gets away some of the dust, sees the signature, brings it to my class. This vase is really beautiful. The body is really well done. It's characteristic of the artist mature style and what we typically see of Steve Zoller's work, right? And I said, what did you pay? And she said, I paid $8 for it and it's signed. $8 for it. I got to tell her that this real bargain, what's it worth? 500 bucks. Based on actual sales records, Retail sales records where similar pieces have sold. That's what I always show you, where something has sold. 500 bucks for this $8 investment. It's a real bargain too. This next real bargain comes from a video call. My video caller said, Dr. Lori, I got this at a thrift store. I saw it there. I wasn't leaving it there. I think that's great. So a lot of you might poo-poo this. Some of you might say, I would have left that there. I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pick up that piece of, of course, porcelain. It's marked, it's hand painted. So what if it's signed and marked? Well, some marks are more important than other marks, let me tell you. And I want you to know which pieces to, of course, maintain. Which pieces to pick up at the thrift store, the yard sale, the estate sale. This one is signed Vincenzo Bertolotti. And he's an Italian from Milan artist known for these portrait busts. This one's 13 inches tall. And it was right there out in the open at the thrift store. My video caller said, Dr. Lori, I thought it was beautiful. I liked the hand painting. I liked actually the expression of the, on the face of the figure. And that's what Bertolotti is known for. Known for those expressions, for that happiness, even uh, of this sort of little peasant figure. A really nice one. I like the hat and the juxtaposition between the light color of the hat and the dark of the hair, really quite nice. But I think it's right here in the face and the smile that really attracted her and attracts most people who collect, of course, his work. Uh, the piece dates, of course, to the 20th century, very well known in Milan and internationally as a sculptor of this type. What did she pay? Well, she paid $10. What is it worth? Similar ones sell for 500. That's a real bargain too. This next real bargain comes from Goodwill. A video caller called me and said, 
I was at Goodwill, Dr. Lori. I had to stand in line on that Saturday morning when I got these pieces, two pieces, uh, two prints that I had to stand in line to get in. And then once I got there, the art bins were full. So I like that the art bins were full. I was going through the art and they were framed, of course. So the framed art pieces, I like to go through those and see these pieces because you've told us, Dr. Lori, that art can be pretty valuable. Well, that's true. I've been telling you. So the video caller says to me, I waited. I'm looking in the bins. I find these. I didn't really look too closely. I saw that they looked like maps and I put them into my cart. So I figured later I'd take a look at them and decide whether or not I was going to buy them. They're $5.99 each. Eh. So I guess he continues shopping around. You know, he decides he's going to check out. We start to do the video call and uh, he checks out. He buys both of them. And on the video call, he says, I don't really know how to tell if they're the real deal or not. I know that they're Courier and Ives because they're marked Courier and Ives. Now, they looked good and they're in frames, but I don't know what's underneath the matting, what's underneath the backboard, what's underneath the frame. And again, I've told you, a lot of damage can be hiding underneath frames. So he said, but I wanted to take a chance for $5.99. Okay, so the first one is of New York, a very famous work of New York by Courier and Ives, right? And of course, the famous lithographers that were based on Nassau Street in New York, Courier and Ives made this one showing you the landmarks of New York City. The second piece that he purchased, the second color lithograph print that he purchased is in fact of Washington DC. So the Washington DC piece is another piece of the same type. One of the telltale signs I explained to him is about the paper. What kind of paper is it on? So we know if we have a piece from the actual 19th century or if we know if we have a piece from the 20th century. It's gonna matter for value. So we looked at that, we identified the paper, I helped him to understand how to do that. And another point that you might be looking for with Courier and Ives is whether or not the actual street address on Nassau Street in New York City, which is where Courier and Ives business was located, if that's printed on the actual print. That's a telltale sign of a good Courier and Ives too. But that's, those aren't the only signs. Those are only a couple of tips for you. I've got a lot more of those tips coming up. So I said, what did you pay again? $5.99 each, Dr. Lori. That includes the frames. That's pretty good. So when we were on the video call and he opened up the actual pieces, the New York piece was cut. So if it's cut, it's worth less. What's that one worth? Well, that one's worth $800 for his $5.99 investment. The Washington DC piece is actually not cut. We opened that one up from the frame too, and we saw that that one was in beautiful condition. What's that one worth? For $5.99, the Washington DC color lithograph by Courier and Ives showing the landmarks of America's capital city Value on it, $1,500. It was the right size and it was a real bargain too. This next real bargain comes from Dr. Lori's class. That's right, my class, so much fun. Um, and it's from an estate sale. So the person in my class bought this at an estate sale. It's 18 inches by 15 inches, almost 16 inches. Um, and it's in a frame and it has a reverse glass black mat. So that's characteristic, it's a telltale sign of a 19th century piece. So you might see a print in one of these black reverse glass painted black mats, and you might see what this is, which is a morning picture of embroidery. So it's made of embroidery, it's of course lovely craft work, and it has an image of a figure in a landscape, which is very typical of mourning or remembrance of a death, right? Remembering someone who passed away um, in this particular manner. It's oval and then it's got a square, um, a rectangular frame. Okay, so I see the piece and she says, I bought the piece for like $10, Dr. Lori. I was at an estate sale. I thought it was pretty. I thought it was unusual. I liked the style of it and it was in good condition. All good things. These are all things you should be looking for. So I said, well, you'll notice that these are vegetable dyes, so which helps to date the piece. That means they're muted colors of, of course, the embroidery threads. The embroidery floss or threads are actually muted colors. Um, so, and they come from natural berries and they come from roots and that's how they actually make the dyes. Prior to them getting to synthetic dyes, which, is, which happens toward the end of the 1800s. Okay, so she's got a nice piece. It's well executed, it's in good shape. 
Uh, the backboard is also in good shape. The backboard will tell you a lot of things about damage or condition. Make sure there aren't little holes, that there might have been bugs eating at it, this kind of thing. Um, it dates to about 1850. It's right smack in the middle of the 19th century, and it's a very nice piece, a morning embroidery piece. I've appraised a lot of these throughout my career. I appraised one that was actually embroidered to recognize the death of General and President Washington in 1799. They can be very valuable. So I said, the estate sale, 10 bucks. She said, nobody cared about it. Nobody wanted it. I thought it was beautiful. There you go. What's it worth? $1,500. Why? Historic piece, beautiful condition, rare. And of course, it had that all important and telltale sign, that characteristic black reverse painted mat. Yeah, that was a real bargain too. I'm Dr. Lori, the PhD Antiques Appraiser. I'm here to help you spot those real bargains. I hope you find your real bargain real soon.